Now with your AWS cloud formation templates, there are nine main objects that some templates will have. Some of them are optional and some of them are mandatory within your template. If we have a look at our template structure here, we have a template on the left hand side and this will be a template that I'll be deploying later on in my demo. But we can see on the right hand side, we have the main objects of this template. So let's walk through these main objects because I think it's quite key to understand how this template could be potentially structured. And especially if you go out into the internet and pull up some samples and have a look at them, you want to be able to understand what you're reading and why you're reading them and why there's certain um, functions or, or bits inside your template. So the first one, um, the first line of your template will be the format version. Now this defines the capabilities that your template will have. Now, believe it or not, the current version um, of the AWS um, CloudFormation format version is 2010.09.09. So you'll see all of the templates out there, hopefully with that format version. That's the only valid version that you can use. And that's the most recent version that's available to you. The other parts that you might see at the start of your template are around metadata and description. And both of these are used to describe what the template does or provide some additional information about what that template does, either for yourself, so that you can see what you've been writing and what you've been doing later on, or sharing with your colleagues or peers or even open sourcing with everybody on the internet. Now, the next section that you might see inside a template is parameters, and those are used to define values that you'll later on pass through the template. Now, in this example, I haven't got any parameters because we don't actually need any parameters to be able to deploy um, what is essentially a storage bucket or a storage account within AWS. So that is an optional one that you may or may not see um, within your templates. Now, the next ones, next three are actually really advanced options. They're mappings, conditions and transforms. Now, a mapping is really a lookup table again, so you can change values throughout your template. Your conditions are things like if this is happening early, somewhere else in the template, do this. Um, and that can be quite useful, especially if you're starting to deploy templates across multiple regions and um, looking at more complex scenarios. Now, the transform is around building a simple declarative language for CloudFormation and again, trying to reuse um, other parts of templates within your template. Now, as I said, those three components within a template are quite advanced, so we're not going to be covering them in detail today, but they are something that you may come across again if you're looking at other templates on the Internet. Now, something that you'll see inside every um, AWS CloudFormation template that you come across is the resources section and you always have to define at least one resource inside your template. In this example, I am defining what my S3 bucket or my storage account within AWS will actually look like. I'm declaring the setup of it, whether I have public or um, non-public access to my storage account, whether there's encryption enabled on it. You can define anything in this section, whether that is an AWS resource like a, a, an S3 bucket or whether it's a virtual machine, or it could be actually be an identity role that you're actually defining inside of that. As long as you're defining one resource, then your template is valid within um, AWS CloudFormation. Now, the last section is outputs, and this, again, is an optional part, but this allows you to return some values from once the template has been created. In this example, I'm outputting the name of the S3 bucket that will be created because I'm not in control um, with my template here um, of what the name will be. So I want to have that back so that I can have a look at it and take a note of it, potentially either to use in another template deployment or something else that's happening within my deployment as well. We'll see later on where we actually output the IP address of an IP that we actually create for a virtual machine so that I can go and check and do some potentially maybe smoke tests or just click on that link and see what's happening inside of it. So the output section is quite useful, again, for sanity checking or for later on doing something more complex on your deployments.